Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Smile with Sly 2021 and it's the Women's Day version. Uh, today we have some special guests that are going to give us an insight on taking action for equality and we have the strong media personality Caritas Karisimbi, she's in Nalongo and we have the controversial fat boy James <laughs> Onen you expect drama from him Tomorrow. and we have the lovely inspirational reverend diana kesiga and they will be giving us a strong perspective in today's society and what it has to do with equality ladies and gentlemen welcome to the 2021 women's day discussion and with me i have amazing guests that you have known the past two weeks and you have sent them some questions that they will be answering for you. I'm looking forward to talking to each and everyone on this panel. They are very uh, interactive, they are going to be very educative and knowledgeable. So I'm excited. Hope you are excited too. I'm Sylvia Namtebi Alibai and I'll be your host and moderator for this discussion. Enjoy. So my first guest is none other than Nalongo Caritas Karisimi. Uh, she's a powerful, to me, she's a powerful media personality. Uh, she's a very inspiring woman. She told me she likes dancing above all else. <laughs> so uh, probably if uh, I'm nice to her, she will show us some moves. I'm looking forward to that. And I'll be asking her some topics that she's going to enlighten us uh, with. So my first uh, question or topic I want you to talk about is something called uh, do you know about this uh, new term called toxic masculinity? Mm. Yes, that's the word. Um, yes, and sadly, um, whether I would say sadly or it's, it's, it's a good thing that that got a name, that situation got a name, where, you know, culture has taught men in the past as a young boy, you're taught to be a man, you're taught to be the provider, you're taught to be the giver, of, I mean, provider of the home, that's all you're taught. But on top of that, the men are taught that vulnerability is a sign of weakness, and that's a no-no for a guy. You're not meant to show your sign of weakness, your, your weakness. And that's where the problem comes. You know, you've been taught and conditioned to think a certain way, to operate a certain way. And through the years, things change, so you honestly cannot remain in the same mindset. I'm raising boys, so um, hmm. I had to sit down and be very honest with myself, and I do it every day because raising boys is like one of the toughest jobs right now. It's, I, I'll call it a job because it's a full-time job. You literally are raising men. Mm -hmm. And I want to change the narrative, you know, where, where the, which we'll talk about later, um, about how men have been, what do we call it? Uh, <laughs> like you have um, racial profiling, and then you also have this other type of profiling where you say gender. men are bad, men are, you know, you, we have to stop that. Gender profiling. Gender profiling. We can't keep doing that. We can't keep saying all men are bad. You possibly don't know all men to make them bad. But men have, have been conditioned to be a certain way, to act a certain way. And when a man, or even in relationships, when you cannot be vulnerable enough for someone to know where you're hurting, where whenever whatever emotion kicks in, when you're not able to find a safe place as a man to be vulnerable, to allow yourself. I'm not saying vulnerability. I know yeah, when, ja when James, I James, when James says there. that, <laughs> you're, probably, <laughs> you're probably envisioning a sobbing yeah. man, he's there, boo boo. <laughs> no, we're saying, and, and you see, because of this COVID period has brought this to light so, and in a very bad way, because men have broken, men have reached a breaking point yeah. because of those pressures. Yeah. It is time for us to understand that it is okay for men to break, but they need to find a safe place to do that, to be able to go. I mean, women are allowed to show all sorts of emotions and women have so many types of emotions. Mm -hmm. So as humans, why can men also show those emotions? Maybe because this, they're different. You're there's not different. Female, there's male. No, no, no. That's what we need to change. Mm -hmm. You can't. Your son is, imagine your son comes crying to you. There's two things you have, you, you would do. You either say, my son, what's happening? They talk to you, you tell them, don't worry, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Or you choose to tell them, keep quiet, like some parents would say. Keep quiet, stop crying, you're a boy, you'd be tough. But no, you need to first understand why are they hurting. So if you don't understand, they suppress everything. 
So when you don't have vulnerability, when a man cannot be vulnerable, when that is taken away, they are left with anger, frustration, so they end up going to seek solace, whether it's alcohol, whether it's other women, whether it's, it's the domestic violence we see, they've bottled up in a lot because of the conditions. And it's time for us to let the bottle talk okay. off. So you agree that the term toxic ma masculinity is viable? It, I hate to say, it is. It does exist, but it needs to be changed. The, the narrative Can you, like, needs to be briefly changed. briefly tell us where it exists to, for a man to be called toxic? And you know, this is a matter that's really trending uh, everywhere. Toxic mas masculinity the everywhere. The toxicness in this is a man being told, is, is what a man turns into because he's been told to be a certain way. He turns toxic. He becomes a toxic person, a toxic being. That brings in the anger, the frustration, and everything that then leads to all the other repercussions. So the toxin, or what, has, what it has all turned into because he was not able to talk to his wife, talk to his you know, sister, and talk to them and let them know, look, this is what, there are men who are going through domestic violence. Yeah. <laughs> They're abused by their wives emotionally, mentally, physically, but they can't because they've been conditioned to be men. But it is okay for them to find a safe place to come and talk to another man, another woman, and just say, look, this is what's happening in my home. What do you suggest that? How can I handle it? Other than being macho. The word macho, it's, it's like the worst in this whole system. Okay. Men should not just be macho. It's okay to I be macho. I see, Jim, you're agreeing. So are we, are we in, uh, in line with this? Well, um, I'll just start by saying when it comes to the term to uh, toxic masculinity that uh, you're talking about is that um, I kind of am not a fan of the word because I feel like it just, it makes it seem like there's something nefarious about masculinity. I think human beings are not perfect. Men are not perfect, women are not perfect. And so I won't say anytime a woman annoys me that that's now toxic femininity. And neither should you if a man were to annoy you, call it toxic masculinity in need of a discussion and, and I don't know, programs to eradicate the toxicness. It's just a part of human nature. Uh, some people are good, some people are bad. Some people are sometimes good and sometimes bad and vice versa. So really the conversation should be about the attitudes we see in the opposite gender that we can talk about. So women should talk about the things that they experience with men and perhaps engage with men to see how men might adjust. Uh, and then also men should be willing to talk with women, not in an adversarial way, not to call it toxic femininity. You know, like for example, every time you ask me for transport money, is that you know, toxic femininity? You know, before we get there, we'll be fine. Let me put a, a yeah. comma right okay, there. Pause <laughs> this. Pause right there. Because what you're talking about leads me to the next topic Caritas has to uh, talk about. So it says, is it possible to have toxic femininity and uh, what would it look like? Women who feel entitled. <laughs> You drove into that, right? Yeah, women who feel entitled. I'm raising boys. I don't want some woman to be frustrating my, my son because she feels entitled that he needs to give her transport. It is okay to be given transport, but don't feel entitled. It's that entitlement that, that, that creates the toxic femininity. You feel that you deserve this. You forget. It puts you in a position of being selfish. So you're thinking about yourself. What about the guy? That's why you have guys coming up with smile. They're like, yo, we've got to think about ourselves. I don't yeah, know these women. The, and just for the record, I would say that most men are okay with gifting women, supporting women, yes. looking after women, Out of giving their own them money. Mm. It's just they feel like the woman needs to bring something to the table to warrant the, the gifts. And to your point, really, the entitlement is the problem where it is expected yeah. without them having to bring something, uh, bring to, something the to the table. Yeah. So I don't think any man would say if he spent a nice, lovely weekend with his girlfriend and she's been nice and sweet and caring if she were to say to him oh honey by the way i do have this minor issue do you think you can assist me i don't think any man would say oh look at you money. you're <laughs> such a gold digger no i think most men would be like oh is that so okay don't worry uh let let me see what i can do <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think we're and then get back to you uh shortly with uh, with a solution with an envelope. great i think we're beginning to draw a picture of these two sides how mm. each on the extreme side would look like, uh, Caritas, have you heard the term feminazi? Feminazi is what women have turned into or what women are slowly turning into. No, I, if we are going to be, we need to be brutally honest, like honestly, we really need to. And after I, I became a mom, 
I have a huge stake in this, so there's no, I have no business mincing my words. Yeah? Don't, mm -hmm. don't Women I, have become feminazis. Just imagine that word. Feminist and nazi. Nazi already sounds very, you know, your uh, uh, total you dictatorial <laughs> picture. Yes. Like, you know, you think of nazi, Kill you think Jews. about Hitler, you think. Yes. Exactly. So you're Kill thinking the men. aggression, you're thinking anger, you're thinking competition, mm. you're battling. So you're missing the point. The point should have been feminist. And feminist is like you're fighting, not fighting. You, 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 you support and you're for women's place at whatever platforms they are. But a feminazi has lost their focus. That's why you have women saying, You cannot be saying that. Because how does that help the situation for you to be that way? So do you think it's an appropriate word for people to use? I don't think we should even be giving it a name. We should be fixing it, not giving it a name. When you give it a name, then you're making it more permanent. We should be saying, look, dissolve it. Let's not think about feminazi. Can we stop where feminist is? And then feminism, and let's work with that. But a feminazi? Where? But um, would you understand why women may be acting this, given the history we've had with women's rights and women's suppression, why it would be going to this direction of a feminazi? Here's my issue. Equality has been misunderstood. When we say equality, first of all, we cannot be equal in the sense that everyone thinks, in the sense that women think. <laughs> we were talking there and we were, we were talking about babies and all, and the advantage for men is they, have, they don't have a clock, a ticking clock. Women do have a ticking clock. Yeah. That already sets you apart. You cannot be equal. <laughs> You've got to think faster and ahead as compared to men. So you already are not on equal levels. You have to go through bearing children and all again. You see, so you cannot be equal. What we're looking at, we're thinking, okay, how can we all get to stop? Listen, that's it. When we all decide to talk, how can we all sit at the same table and talk? Because even in the Bible, <laughs> you correct me. <laughs> not the you know. But right. my understanding is when God created Adam and Eve, it wasn't for competition. It wasn't for power struggle. It was for coexistence. One can't be without the other. That's something we need to understand. How do we coexist? How do we let each one of us get heard? And our choices, our decisions, if we talk, if we understand what the other uh, gender is talking about, if men talk and women listen, if women talk and, okay, not shout a big noise, but oh, if they actually you, talk... Why, why did you have to add in that? <laughs> yeah, because okay. you I'm, just I'm, said I'm if men talk and women listen, and in the way to women talk, but not shouting. Why did because you feel men, the need to I'm a sneak woman. that in? She knows I'm a shout. woman. No, I know. No, no. I, I, no, I'm a woman, and I know that women can woman turn into shouts? mosquitoes. <laughs> no, no. Well, I, I'm not she married. She does it for so a living, right? I, no, I don't have any. Oh, no. Fortunately for him, he doesn't exist, so he won't be hearing my noise, but... Sometimes women tend to turn into mosquitoes. I think in the ear, they just they say, first calm down. You won't be heard if you're shouting, if you're... Men you know? do not turn into mosquitoes because it was now, very smooth sailing for men, you in that point. Men then become violent. Oh. So you see, this is it. You're, 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 that's the feedback that they're giving because you're not listening. So the frustration is growing and growing. Mkazi Amu is telling her she's not getting it. I want to talk to her. She can't stop shouting. So the man... In him, it's frustration. Even in your, even in a, 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 an intimate relationship, it's just plain and simple. If there is no communication, if there is no uh, feeling of safety that I can actually let my guard down and tell you how I'm feeling, what's going on, it, it will avoid that frustration that leads to the noise, the shouting. Then, before you know it, you're going at each other. Nothing solved. Great. Reverend, I saw you nodding and shaking your head mm. on this topic. I would like to give you an opportunity to tell us what you think of all this, well, especially the new terms. Yeah, the new terms. The, yeah. Yes, I think people are naming, uh, we are naming each other because we are actually a very wounded people. Um, have you ever heard someone say, you're shouting and you're not shouting? Yes. But, but really... They're, they're saying, um, you don't understand me, I can't hear you. In, in fact, when you raise your voice, especially as a woman, you're saying, you're, I'm not being heard. And so if I'm more aggressive, I'm louder, I will 
push you down and you get to hear me, but we know that that doesn't actually happen. Um, relationships have gone horribly wrong because for the work that I am in is about helping right relationships. Whether it's the right relationship with God, right relationship with yourself, and then with others. And it's gone horribly wrong. Um, the, the, the women I am seeing and that entitlement, and seeing it in marriages. How could you be making three times as much as your husband and you're having a tantrum that he brings nothing to the table? People, the companionship she talked about that we ought to have has died out. Mm -hmm. Everybody has, has, has lost the meaning of marriage. Um, it's about what do I get out of it, not what I give. Um, people are not mature enough to have real conversations about the pain they've been through, about the challenges they're facing. It just becomes a demand or it becomes you know, competition. Um, but I feel we're dealing with a very wounded generation. And that's because I went through a stage where I did weddings and every other wedding, someone had lost their parents in childhood yeah. or, or one of their parents. And I think there's, there's a lot of pain there that has unearthed, especially in the time of HIV AIDS. This is the generation we're dealing with. Thank you, Reverend. I take away one thing that uh, people are coming up with new terms because we are living in a world of wounded people. I think that's what brings on feminazi, toxic this, toxic that. Yeah, great perspective there on Caritas's points. Uh, allow me to move on to our next interesting guest, and he's none other than James Sonen, <laughs> aka Fat Boy, a man who is slim but is known by his uh, pseudonym, <laughs> <laughs> Fat Boy. <laughs> James, nice to see you. Good to be here, thank you. Actually, he's uh, got a compressive background, you know. I know him as a legendary radio presenter, and he's had his education in Japan, in an American school in Japan. And of recent, he's created, I think, the most trending digital uh, radio station. And they happen to be our sponsors today, and that's none other than RX Radio. We are so privileged to have you, James. Thank you. Fat boy, I'll be calling you from now on. <laughs> and my first topic for you uh, would be, can a man be a feminist? Uh, yeah. And I'm happy to say I am one today. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, you're in the right place. Uh, explain yourself. How? So, obviously... Uh, I think the way men have reacted to feminism in the past uh, as it was in its ascendance is a bit of a shock. You know, you're used to a particular social order and then now there's this movement of, of people advocating for fundamental change, just upsetting the way society is structured and ordered. And of course, that will be met with resistance. When people get used to a way of doing things, they don't want you to rock the boat too much. They're comfortable. And now here you are saying, the way you've been doing it is wrong. Change everything, be different. So yeah, of course, in the beginning, there were many men that were very hostile towards it, perhaps tried to get in the way of it. Uh, but still, um, the movement persisted, and we are where we are today due to the role of the activists and other factors that were probably more important. I would say it's industrialization and technological development that made it possible for women to now to, in, uh, to, to thrive in the new modern era, uh, to advance in their careers, in professions, in, in leadership. And so we are now in a world today where women are all over the place uh, in positions of power. Obviously, not enough, according to the feminists, the activists who are still <laughs> at the forefront of Your that. Your skills. <laughs> You're getting used and to so, it. And so where, where do I see myself? Or let me start by saying where I saw myself. So yes. in the beginning, obviously, um, I thought that some of the excesses of the feminazis were to the detriment of men in particular. I thought that they were advocating for certain policies that, that were hurting men. But instead I've come to realize that a lot of the things that they're advocating for are in fact going to benefit men 
and in a strange odd twist, might end up injuring women, but they're yet to realize Like that. what? Give us an example. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give us an so, example. Mm. All right. So you say, oh, women need more positions of power. We need more opportunities in business and career mm -hmm. and industry. And okay, fine. To that I say, absolutely. Because with more women becoming successful professionally means more women have money, mm -hmm. which means that me, I as a man, no longer need to meet the burden of maintaining Shit. a woman's uh, mm -hmm. lifestyle. Mm -hmm. In fact, in these days, I can get them to assist me uh, in, in my lifestyle. They can now bring money to me and, and, and to men all over the place. We're being taken out for drinks, for dates, for trips yeah. by right. women who now have their own money, which yeah. means I, as a man, the burden is lessened because in the old format, all of that rested on the man, mm -hmm. see? But now, I'm just there chilling at home. I get a call from a girl. Hey, can we go spend a weekend somewhere? Hey, there's this new restaurant. Do you want to go? Hey, there's this new coffee joint. There's this new movie. Do you want to go? Up. And I just say, yep, 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 yep. And I've seen my expenditures drastically <laughs> reducing. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm like, yo, this life is good. Plus, okay. the, thanks to the sexual revolution, they all now want to have sex with you on the first date. Yeah. We'll come to that. We'll come to that. <laughs> so, let's put, let's put so you're getting all the free right sex. Yeah. You're enjoying all their money. Uh, 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 where, 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 where? How can you not want to be a feminist? I'm all a right. feminist. Uh, great, great. I knew there was right. something to it. Yeah, the there was something to it. That's a good point. So my question yeah. to you is, have you started cleaning, washing clothes, uh, changing diapers? and you know spending more time at home with your woman that's if you have one okay so I'm not married and neither do I live with a woman and so in my own life I don't have to deal with questions about who, what roles are for whom um, but even if that were to happen these days and especially for anyone in you know if you're even middle class and up really you have domestic help um, I don't think in any middle class home I, I think it's rare these days in not a middle in class Uganda. home. Not in Uganda. In Uganda. Okay, yeah. I'm saying in Uganda, in yes. most middle class homes, you do find people there helping with the domestic. Yeah. Uh, but you know, stuff. most men don't like that. But, but, no, but my point, okay, but my point is at least um, seeing as that role has been taken on by a paid worker, and yes, there are men that still insist that their women uh, cook for them, cook especially. And do that. I yeah. would say to such men, just. Just, just chill that, yeah. you know, just let that one go. So that, one's a lo what, that one's a lost battle. What makes women, them women the don't want, then? Women don't want to do that stuff. Like, just then, accept it. Why do the husbands end up, uh, liberal husbands like you, and thank you very much, end up uh, getting married to their mates? I think it's the men who do that do so out of spite. I've met many women, professional women, highly accomplished, highly educated, who upon getting married to men who they thought were progressive and modern, started demanding that they perform more traditional roles around yes. the house uh, and upon their refusal to do so a few months later they see that the maid is pregnant and when she confronts him about it he's like well what do you expect mm -hmm. she and was she was the wife problem. she was now acting like the wife unlike you who betrayed me and went about doing your own things and so it's so making many. money Right. So that so, you can go and pay debts by a woman. <laughs> Maybe to remind our viewers who are following us, uh, the mighty fat boy has a diploma of philosophy uh, from the University oh. of London. <laughs> so we expect a lot of <laughs> philosophical terms <laughs> and mind games to be going on here. <laughs> so. Uh, Reverend makes a very good point, but we'll move on uh, right ahead because we have a lot to cover. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Lamo with her new single, Beautiful, right here on Women's Day. I want to take the chance to remind you that you shine like the colors of the rain. Tabasamu la koli na angaza Mji Na uwezo wako unarudisha Matumaini So like the king that you are All your mugwe tosangika Rain like the queen that you are Na mugu liparikiwa You are beautiful You are beautiful Just the way you are, I say you 
guys and I hope you've had a great time we'll go right into it Reverend let's hear your perspective what does uh, gender equality mean to you first and foremost I for me definitions are important I don't want to do what I can't do all right I I need I can't God cannot place a gift in me and someone else stifles it I need to thrive in my gift. And in my maturity, I need to know how to do that in relationship with others, the other gender, right? Who I might think are standing in my way of thriving. Um, one of the things I've learned about this generation is that everyone is talking about me. People don't know what partnership is. People don't know what companionship is. And it's a very Western thing, individualism. And that's why we, we, are, uh, we are saying, I want this, I want this, I want this. But it takes a certain maturity for people, two people to work together. Whatever their flaws, whatever. But I need to make sure the man thrives in his gifting, his strength, and what he offers and I thrive, and we find a creative way. There's no two scenarios where you say, this is the solution. And that's what's the beauty of the complexity of human relationships. What is working in my home, as two priests working in a home, and somebody else, is going, the dynamics may change, but it's you agreeing on them, you feeling valued in the relationship, and you giving the very best what society needs now for gender equality is to reward what I give. Not say this one is trash and this one is important. Um, they need to also um, access 
who has access? I think the boys are now being left out, all the jobs are being open. We're not saying that. We're saying the men need access, give what they give, and the women need to. And um, so people need access and opportunity. And they need to grow up confident and valued. For me, that's where gender equality is. Um, when one group is denied just because of their gender, not because not every woman should be a leader. Some people are disastrous. They mm. shouldn't be leader. Mm. And it's the same thing. Not, not because you're a man, you can't lead. Yeah. These days when we, we lose our spouses and they say, the firstborn must lead. Hey, the guy is an alcoholic. <laughs> How can he lead anybody? Yeah. The guy is confused. He doesn't know who he is. How is he going to lead the rest of the family? Mm. I love it when they say, okay, the man must be the heir, but the daughters need to decide who amongst them should lead. It gives that balance. There's still the cultural aspect, but the girls have a decision on, uh, ah, our brother, this one, uh, mm. uh, bless his soul, we love him, but the other one is more gifted. He will keep the family in balance and keep healthy relationships. Well, thank you, Reverend. Reverend seems to center uh, around partnerships and uh, finding a balance. Caritas, men need to recognize their softer side of themselves. And for fat boy, uh, it's confusion. Gender equality can be confusing, which is also a good point. We are trying to rubble through all that confusion as we find our soft side and find a balance. Uh, thank you. The next and last topic is sexuality. And I'll say that sexuality is viewed differently for men and women. In most instances, men's sexual exploits are considered, uh, he's considered as a hero of some sort, while a woman who has so many sexual exploits is considered to have no value. Um, but boy, what would be the, uh, <laughs> the cause of the difference in this perspective? Well, it's uh, straightforward. Uh, someone put it this way. A key that can open many locks is a master key. Uh, and we value it because, wow, what a special key that must be. But a lock that can be opened by any key <laughs> is considered <laughs> worthless <laughs> because then you're Ouch. a useless lock. Um, it takes tremendous skill to actually be wow. sexual with a woman. Um, this is why even as men, we admire other men that we see with different beautiful women. Because we know there's the charm, the, the tact, understanding a woman's emotions, the skill, the patience, the, you know, being smooth. All of these are qualities which men aren't just naturally born with. Okay, you could even be naturally handsome, but even then, it's usually not enough. You have to employ other things. So by the time we meet a guy with a high notch count, and, and in particular of women who are we consider beautiful, we think this is a guy who has some value, like he's, he's, he knows what he's doing. Whereas for a woman who is known to be you know, promiscuous and sleeps around with you many see, men, even the word has changed. We know that um, it, 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 yeah. it really requires, it really requires such, I mean, any woman can just walk down the street and say, who wants to sleep with me? And immediately there'll be a long line of people. Wow. So there is, no, there is nothing special about a woman being able to, uh, to, to bed many men. And with, with respect to the man that might desire her, I find myself thinking, wow, then she must not be worth much. I think that's where it comes from. But it's not just men that perpetuate this. Even women do. When a woman wants to put me down, the first thing she tells me, oh, you can't even get laid. You can't even get a girl. So she's ascribing value to me for my inability to get a woman, if that's what she thinks. Uh, and so these stereotypes and perspectives, I think they're not just, it's not just from men projecting onto women, but even women project to, onto themselves. I think even you, if you had a no. female friend who was a bit no. too <laughs> promiscuous, you would say to her, girl, no. aren't you cheapening yourself? No, no. No. Don't generalize fat you boy. That's what that? I've been trying to tell you. You wouldn't say that to no, your friend? I wouldn't. Uh, so I'll just note your bias. When you are talking about a woman, a man with sexual exploits, you didn't use the word pro. Promiscuous, Promiscuous man. While the, when you woman. came to describe the woman, it came out so seamlessly. Like, you see where the bias is or you don't? Well, I guess you caught that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I think it's that part of the locks and the doors and the keys. Uh, please, and yeah. can I yeah. ask something right now? Yeah. I am asking Fat Boy, 
to repent of using that image. The keys and the locks it is and the... so <laughs> degrading. Yes, it is. And it is so inhumane. Yeah. I think we are losing humanity. Uh, but but boy, I, I apologize. I don't know. I don't want to apologize. I think for me, I found that as an insult that image. What do you think, fat boy, about that? About the imagery used? Well, I didn't invent it. I wish I could take you credit for it. You brought it up. It, but, it means but you agree with it. You <laughs> condone it. It's, it. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a popular way of addressing the discrepancy between how male promiscuity and female promiscuity is. At made. least you judged equally. That's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. Uh, and, and we so, are taking strides. <laughs> and, and yes, it does paint the, the female aspect of it in a more uncharitable light. Yes, it does. But it's, I would say to women, own it. Um, rather than to be concerned about whether a man thinks you're worthless or valuable, if you are sexually adventurous, own it, claim it. So wh what, do you, what do you think about the same topic? Sexuality. Yeah. Again, I'm very big on definitions because as generations go, we lose uh, definitions. For me, sexuality is about who I am as female and how the, the other gender is as male and how we have a healthy relationship. It doesn't boil down to sex. Sexuality is how I communicate with a male. Um, yes, there are attractions and there, there, there are an understanding of, 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 of who we are in, in light of them and who they are in light of us. So for me, it's, it's, it's definitions. So for me, it's around having healthy relationships. Uh, so statistics show that one of the contributing factors to gender-based violence in marriages today is the issue of bride price. Is bride price still relevant in today's Uganda? I'll start with Caritas. <sighs> it's changed. You know, the... the Okay, first of all, when you go and, and, and just do research and understand the origin of bride price and its intention, its original intention uh, was to give women a certain feeling of value, value in, in, in a marriage. But then the flip side of it, which I think hadn't been looked into, is what, <laughs> yes, what does that make the give of this bride price feel? You understand? So it actually puts the man in a position of, of power because I paid, I, I paid dowry, so I feel like, for my look, property. I, for my property. So it, it, it actually then changes. And of late, it's even gotten worse because it's no longer bride price. Bride price has changed and it has made it so bad for society because it's become so monetary, so... Um, Instead of what people would take before, like in my culture, you take a gourd of, of you take your milk in, in the gourds, you take uh, your our traditional cows. local goon. Yeah, you know, for you to bring bed, chairs, Free. cars, that's Cow. a lot of pressure for everyone else. And so then the money is like it's a bad thing. The intentions. The intentions may be there. But I mean you may say, okay, fine, we've got to pay bride price here oh, because sure. that's the norm and all that. But at the end of the day, what are you saying by what you're doing? We just need to understand each other. We are going to raise a generation of broken people because the boys are looking at the men and they think it is macho to be like this. The girls are looking at the other women and they're saying, if he doesn't bring this to my mukolo, it's going to be like, you're putting pressure on the boys. Mm -hmm. And the boys are being, the pressure the leads them to places. The to the girls. So I see fat boy giggling and uh, smiling. I think I'm he dead. needs to <laughs> expound uh, on this. Uh, the feminist. Um, bride price. The feminist. I feel like um, <laughs> it's a double bind um, mm -hmm. because in my experience, you know, I've mostly heard about the bride price from women. Uh, and I know there's that discussion about let's not ob objectify women. But I find that it's women that objectify themselves and price themselves. I, I agree um, with you. Maybe this, this remember, is before, me. before that, How many we, remember, we remember Jeff <laughs> saying, I'm going to sit at home, throw you your can money take it, at take me. It. So does that mean the future men are going to be objectifying themselves? However, Reverend, um, go ahead. I, I, I agree. <laughs> if my, let it, depending on who decides, first of all, 
traditionally it was the men who decided, right? Uh, Senga could soften them a bit and say, you know, things are not as what, what they seem. Um, but it was mainly the men's decision. And, and, and for me as the girl coming from that home, I don't feel valued. I feel like all you've been waiting for is what you can make out of me. Cows, cash, yes. cars, whatever it is. And the word bride price is what kills it all. I think we really need to say something different. I know for myself, my family said, our girl is not for sale. If you want to give gifts of appreciation, do so. But it's because we think you're a man of integrity, you're a man who's intelligent. By the way, you don't, you don't bring, for me, I'm looking for the intelligence, the potential. If you didn't have the opportunity to make cash at that stage, it's okay, it's made together. Well, um, first of all, I like to say I've learned so much by being a part of this panel. Um, it's not always that I'm in the presence of such a beautiful and intelligent <laughs> and uh, amazing ladies who have shared with me ideas I've not previously thought of before. And um, I think if you were watching this, you too must have been feeling the same way. Um, I think we can do our part to listen to more women as they speak, understand what their challenges are, and to be supportive in their quest for the rights that they feel they don't have at present and the opportunities. Um, as a business owner, I can tell you that you know, women do great in the workplace and there should be no reason why they should be held back. And if you are a woman, you shouldn't feel that you should be held back. Many people are looking for talented women to hire, to employ, uh, to work with, to mentor. Uh, and so as we commemorate Women's Day today, just know that we are living in a world that's full of possibilities. And if you believe in yourself and you truly want to accomplish your dream, uh, you can. Just be warned, there are many unscrupulous men out there <laughs> who are gonna try to, to it in. who are gonna try to mess with your head <laughs> and break your heart. But yeah. that's part of life. We all deal with problems. Don't get out the well. Don't don't yeah. But yeah. just don't let those those missteps hold you back. Um, there is always more to accomplish in life, and you definitely get there. Thank you, Reverend. What would be your words on Women's Day, 2021? Well, first of all, as, as a priest and um, a woman leader, I want to thank you, Sylvia, for bringing this debate and allowing us to be as open and honest as we can. I realize, and I would like to ask my fellow clergy, who are mainly men, to really listen into this, because we are not addressing this problem in a healthy manner. I want to say, as a biblical feminist, one, I believe we are all of value and no one should treat us otherwise. Two, that not everybody is a leader, but where I am gifted with leadership. I don't want to bring in male leadership, I want to lead as a woman. Thirdly, um, <clears throat> what uh, Nalongo said is, as we are making decisions for this country, for this nation, for this community, for our families, we need to be able to participate and contribute to that. Um, at the moment, I have been participating as a woman from the Women's Situation Room about what is happening in this nation during elections. Men, the only solution is not violence. There are healthy ways in which to bring things to the table. And what is missing are the women. We who give birth to you do not want our children to die, disappear, and, 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 and the world to be in chaos. We want, as women, an opportunity to give of ourselves. There's only one you. And we don't want the world to miss out on any of us. So let's keep this conversation going. We need to find out what are healthy relationships because we don't live in the world alone. 
May God bless you and we hope to continue the conversation. Well, with that, we say thank you so much for listening in and there is no words I can use to say thank you to my special guests for educating me. I'm the first person to be educated tonight and I hope that you two get some new knowledge from this. Thank you and happy Women's Day. Bye -bye. Happy Women's Day. Happy Women's Day. <laughs>